Hello everyone. Today I will be talking about China's new drone carriers. I'm talking about two ships. They are both mini aircraft carriers of sorts that can launch and recover small UAVs, as well as surface and underwater vehicles. They are both fairly small ships, at least compared to the typical aircraft carrier. The first of the two vessels is a catamaran UCAF carrier, as you can see in the left-hand side photo. The ship's name is unknown. At least I was not able to find out. UCAF stands for Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicles, so the ship is designed for operating aerial drones, and these are for military purposes. The second vessel is named the Zhuhai Yun, which you can see in the right-hand side photo. It looks much more like a typical ship than an aircraft carrier. It is a civilian ship built to conduct research, but as we shall see, can have potential military applications. It is designed to accommodate a mix of UAVs, unmanned surface vehicles, and underwater drones. One special thing about this ship is that it is supposed to be able to operate autonomously, without human input. At least in the open ocean. We'll talk about this later. Let's start with the catamaran drone carrier. It can launch and recover small aerial vehicles. The purpose of the ship appears to be for naval training, drilling, and exercises. Basically, how it works is that the drones on the ship are supposed to simulate incoming threats from the enemy. For example, incoming anti-ship missiles. These are done to facilitate naval exercises for Chinese naval warships. The warships participating in the exercise can then decide how to handle the pretend threat. The Chinese military news channel, the CCTV Seven, called the ship a Navy experimental training ship. The name of the ship remains unknown at this stage. She was launched in May 2021. And appears to be operational by the end of 2022, according to reports by the military news channel, the CCTV Seven. The photo you can see on the screen right now shows the launch of the ship. From that, you can get a sense of the size of the ship. And if you look closely enough, you can see a cartoon shark motif on the side of the hull, alluding to its naval purpose. However. A model of the ship was already seen in the 2021 Zhuhai Air Show in September of that year, providing a glimpse into how the ship might function once it enters service. I'm going to show you several images of the ship from the 2021 Zhuhai Air Show. They are of a good quality. In the first photo, you can see a completed ship with two flight decks, one front and one aft. The large flight deck in front of the superstructure shows five landing pads for rotary drone helicopters. In front of the helipad, there are two reels for anchor cables. Based on recent footages released by Chinese media, this configuration of the front flight deck in the model appears to be correct. It is representative of the real ship. The large flight deck in the front might provide room for additional facilities, such as catapults or other launchers for fixed-wing drones, including those designated as targets. As for the helicopter drones themselves, the Zhuhai display included a double rotor drone associated with this catamaran training ship. Based on recently released footage by the CCTV, a drone bearing this resemblance was indeed deployed on the ship. It is very small and certainly much smaller than any manned helicopter. In the photo, you can clearly see a long bar underneath the drone, and this is attached to some sort of signal emitter on the end of the bar on both ends. The drone can potentially use these devices to send out signals. Mimicking the signature of various kinds of missiles, or even electronic warfare attacks, or elder threats, for the purpose of naval drills. In this photo, we can clearly see the rear flight deck of the ship, which is not marked as of yet. The rear flight deck can provide ample space for landing actual piloted helicopters. For example, for the purpose of transporting supplies, exchanging personnel, and so on. 
the rear flight deck can of course be used to operate more drone helicopters. Alternatively, this would be the perfect place to install small catapults or static launchers to support the operation of fixed-wing aerial drones. It could also carry recovery mechanism for receiving the drones, possibly through arrested landing. The possibilities are endless. Unfortunately, the CCTV has not released any footages of the rear flight deck, so its purpose remains unconfirmed. Another feature I want to draw your attention to is the ridiculously tall tower in the middle of the superstructure. In fact, the height of this tower is simply extreme. Obviously, the tower supports all sorts of electronic antenna domes, including radar, communication devices between the ship and the drones, and data sharing links with other ships. The sheer height of the tower provides very good supporting structure for placing electronic systems relying on the line of sight, for example radar systems. Obviously, because the Earth is curved, the higher your radar is placed, the further you can see. Additionally, putting the communication links between the ship and the airborne drones atop such a high tower can improve the reliability of the network. This makes it easier to control a large number of airborne drones at the same time. Aside from the ship and the drones, you can clearly see in the same display what appears to be an aircraft carrier on rails. And this is actually the model of a moving target, helping the PLA Navy practice anti-ship capabilities. According to satellite images, a pretend vessel that can move on rails has been set up in the Xinjiang province in northwestern China. According to analysts, it is basically one giant moving target, helping the PLAN and the PLA rocket force with target practice. This is an area that has been used in the past for Chinese ballistic missile tests, including anti-ship ballistic missiles. Although the purpose of these life-size warship models may well be to support the testing of PLA electronic warfare systems and kinetic weapons. The inclusion of the model of the moving target at the Zhuhai Airshow alongside the catamaran drone carrier show the PLA Navy is dead serious about testing its weapons and drilling its forces. Anyway, back to the ship. So, just quickly summing up the ship's main missions, the drone carrier is a centerpiece of naval exercises in the future, especially when practicing defense against incoming threats. The drones launched by the carrier can pretend to be a variety of aerial threats, such as enemy drone swarms, high-volume anti-ship saturation attacks, and electronic warfare attacks. These are done for the purpose of facilitating naval combat exercises. This helps the PLA Navy to practice using the weapons they have available to defend their ships and to inform the research and development of new naval countermeasures and to refine existing countermeasures against future threats. There should be potential secondary functions for the carrier as well. The naval drones launched by the ship can engage in reconnaissance and surveillance missions, functioning as expendable scouts. The large helicopter landing deck can be used to deliver supplies vertically to forces operating on land, especially during amphibious operations in the early stages. The main purpose, however, remains to operate unmanned aerial combat drones, primarily for naval training purposes, but could also be for recon and offensive purposes to a limited extent. The war in Ukraine demonstrated that unmanned systems and electronic warfare will play a crucial role in the future of warfare, including naval warfare. The second ship I want to talk about is the Zuhai Yun, or literally the Zuhai Cloud, this is the autonomous drone carrier I was talking about earlier, capable of unmanned navigation in the open ocean. She is not part of the PLA Navy, 
The Zhuhai Yun is a civilian drone carrier for maritime research purposes and ocean surveys. She is owned by the Southern Ocean Science and Engineering Guangdong Laboratory, which is part of the Sun Yat-sen University. The laboratory's goal is to survey an underwater and above water area 50 nautical miles in diameter using a network of unmanned systems. The Zhuhai Yun is a mothership for sensor equipped air surface and underwater research and monitoring vehicles. She was built by the Huangpu Wenchong Shipyard in Guangzhou, a subsidiary of the China State Shipbuilding Corporation. Construction started in July 2021 with keel laying, and she was launched in May 2022. The Zhuhai Yun is made out of aluminium. She has an aluminium hull with a length of 88 meters and a beam of 14 meters. Displacement is 2,200 tons, so she is by no means a big ship. Maximum speed is on the low side of 18 knots. But do remember, she is not a naval ship, so does not require high speed. She relies on a diesel-electric propulsion system, using three diesel generators to produce electricity, which is in turn used to power the ship. She has an emergency backup battery in case something goes wrong with the power plant. She has two azimuth pod thrusters which are marine propellers placed in pods that can be rotated. They give the ship better maneuverability than a fixed propeller and rudder system. She has two A-frames allowing over-the-side operation of unmanned surface vehicles. At the rear of the ship, an aft winch is installed, and this is used to deploy both manned submersibles and unmanned underwater drones. Now let's talk about the Zhuhai Yun's autonomous artificial intelligence system. It is called the Intelligence Ocean Stereo Observing System. The ship is the center point of a network of unmanned observation platforms for the Guangdong Science and Engineering Laboratory. While a human crew is likely needed to traverse busy areas like a port, the navigation of waters in the open ocean can be automated, and can be done without human assistance. The autonomous AI system also helps with energy management aboard the ship. An AI energy management system controls the diesel engines, the power generators, and the backup batteries, helping the ship to regulate energy consumption and electricity generation depending on operational requirements at the time. So the Zhuhai Yun can be said to be the world's first autonomous drone carrier, albeit for civilian usage, as opposed to naval use, as one would otherwise expect. Finally, let's talk about some of the potential military applications of a ship like the Zhuhai Yun. The Zhuhai Yun is a civilian research vessel first and foremost, with uses in maritime conservation and disaster prevention. But she could have military applications as well, or other future ships like her could well have military applications. Firstly, the mothership could coordinate swarms of unmanned surface vessels. Chinese military firms are known to be developing unmanned surface vessels for naval warfare. Yunzhou Tech a leading developer of unmanned surface vehicles, revealed six surface drones in late 2021. It uses a dynamic networking technology to allow swarms of drone ships to engage hostile targets in a coordinated manner without the need for manual control. In 2018, Yunzhou Tech demonstrated a 56-boat swarm of unmanned vessels for various conflict control and resolution purposes. The Zhuhai Yun, or future vessels like her, could potentially in theory act as a mothership for swarms of unmanned armed drones. Secondly, gathering underwater navigation data are crucial for safe submarine operations. Charting the underwater geography is critically important for China's submarine forces. 
As the incident involving the USS Connecticut highlights, highly accurate underwater navigation data is critically important for helping the submarine to avoid undersea obstacles, especially submarine mountains and fairly shallow parts of the ocean. An autonomous ocean survey vessel like the Zhuhai Yun can provide accurate charting on the topography of the seabed. As a result, Chinese submarines would be able to improve mission planning and navigational flexibility, taking potentially many different paths to improve mission effectiveness. In terms of submarine drones, Chinese firms have developed underwater drones able to fire torpedoes. The Zhuhai Yun, or future ships like her, can coordinate submarine drones to attack enemy warships with heavy torpedoes. Unlike manned submarines, the submarine drones would be relatively expendable and can take high risk in tracking down and destroy valuable enemy capital ships, even sacrificing themselves in the process. A large number of aerial drones or unmanned surface vessels can conduct wide area surveillance and reconnaissance to find adversary vessels like an aircraft carrier, for example which can then be attacked by land-based anti-ship missiles. The unmanned aerial vehicles acting as expendable scouts would not need to worry about being shot down by enemy fighters. They can do as much surveillance and reconnaissance as the PLA Navy's heart content. And that's all from me folks on China's autonomous drone aircraft carriers. If you'd like to learn more about the five most dangerous Chinese Navy combat drones, please watch this video right here.